Hello, welcome everyone to today's webcast titled From Compliance to Security, Making PCI Earn Its Keep. I'm Crystal Miller, your moderator and host with Tripwire. Thank you for taking this time to join us for a really good presentation today. In fact, today's presentation is part two of a three-part series of webcasts that discuss how you can leverage your existing PCI investment for file, in, for file integrity monitoring to expand your security coverage for little overhead and additional cost. Today's presentation specifically will discuss how you can utilize your FIM solution that you've already paid for to provide intelligent intrusion detection. I'd now like to take this time to introduce our dynamic duo, or in other words, our two presenters on today's webcast, Michael Thielander, Director of Product Marketing, and Alex Cox, System Engineer at Tripwire. Michael has served as co-founder, product manager, and, business, and in business strategic roles for a number of innovative technology companies over the last 20 years. Specifically at Tripwire, he fills the roles of product marketing director, product manager, and business unit director. He, he spends the bulk of his time, though, presenting at industry and user events, working with Tripwire's product strategy teams, and serving as a liaison to analysts, editors, and industry thought leaders. He has articles and interviews uh, have appeared in IT Professional, CFO Magazine, SoftwareCEO.com, and other publications. So welcome, Michael. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you very much, Crystal. We also have Alex Cox. Again, he's our Senior Systems Engineer and a SANS mentor uh, who's responsible on a daily basis for demonstrating and supporting Tripwire's products and services. Alex plays a key role in providing our customers with a techni with technical overview of our product architecture, functionality, systems, data requirements, and integration with other enterprise applications. Alex also presents at numerous seminar presentations, speaker engagements around North America, and if we're lucky, we have the pleasure of him joining us on webcasts like the one today. So today's product demos will be demonstrated by Alex. Thank you, Alex, for joining us. Having me. So I'd now like to pass it over to both of our presenters. Thank you again for being a part of part two of this three-part webcast today. Michael, Alex? Great. Thank you very much, Crystal. Um, and Alex, thank you very much for joining me once again. Uh, we're coming to you sort of tag teaming from different parts of the company. I'm in Portland, Oregon, where it's not quite noon yet, uh, and it's snowing a little bit. Alex, where are you today? I'm based out of Chicago. And uh, we've got great weather here today. It's been a nice one. <laughs> <laughs> that, that just seems unlikely and unfair somehow. So uh, <laughs> exactly. Alex and I like to team up on these webcasts. Alex is going to cover the technical demo, and I'm going to set a little bit of groundwork in terms of what we do and why we do it and who we do it for. Uh, the products we're going to talk about today, the products that Tripwire um, really brings to market around security and compliance automation, Tripwire Enterprise Suite for Security Configuration Management, and then Tripwire Log Center. We're going to spend most of today talking about Tripwire Enterprise um, and I guess the question that should come up, we've said that this is the second part of a series. We, we'd like to do a third part of this series, and we hope that in 35, 30, 35 minutes here, we can impart something of value to you about how to extend your security practices really with uh, money that you've already spent. And the question always comes up, who should be attending this webcast? And I would just say that if you love compliance, if you absolutely love auditors and you love doing compliance checklists and you love waivers and process management and you use security to prove your compliance, um, yeah, this is probably not the presentation for you. If, on the other hand, you live for infrastructure security and you live for uh, information security in your IT um, environment, uh, but you use compliance really to get you the funds that you need to do your job and do it well, then this presentation is very much for you, actually. So we're going to jump now to um, a story, actually. Before I get too much into the uh, technical information and background, I wanted to take a little uh, side trip, a little detour. And I want to talk about some news and information, basically. And just earlier this month, um, some information I saw in the news came out of uh, actually Italy, in Florence. The Palazzo Vecchio is a very, very famous um, 
not medieval, I should say, Renaissance palace in Florence, Italy, that's covered in all of its great halls with some very, very famous uh, masterpieces of art. Uh, one of them uh, is made by an artist named Vasari, and it's, you can actually see it in this image that I'm going to show you. High up on the wall in the background, you can see this large palatial room. It's actually covered with murals, uh, frescoes, uh, original paintings that date back four or five hundred years, basically. And one of these, very high and above the wall, has been drawing attention of uh, a great deal of attention lately from the international art community and could be one of the greatest finds really of the 21st century related to art. Um, and the reason is that uh, as they inspect this wall and where this painting is then, there's about an inch and a half air gap behind this painting that doesn't exist anywhere else in this palatial room. Um, and when they do sonography on it, they realize that it's hollow behind this. An artificial wall has been built in front of the old wall, and this painting by Vasari was put was put in front of it. And on this painting, uh, and there's a this is an extreme detail view right here. There's a little tiny section of words that says circa trova, which really means in in Italian, it's a it's a uh, variation of seek and you'll find. So they started doing some inspection. Actually, got the government to agree to poke a hole in this precious painting and look at it. And it looks like what may be under this precious painting is an even more precious painting, actually a work of art that's been, that has disappeared um, really 500 years ago by Leonardo da Vinci, where he went and painted in that same palace, the story is he painted a, uh, a large mural called the, Bal the, the Battle of Angiari. Uh, and the only reason we even know about it is because a copy of it was made by the artist Rubens, and then it showed up in one of his sketchbooks. This is the Rubens sketch and what it might look like. So the amazing news is that behind this wall, this fake wall hidden for 500 years, could be this masterpiece of art that's even greater than the masterpiece that's on top of it. And I want to use this analogy, we'll jump right back into IT security and compliance, to ask really the fundamental question of, of the presentation Alex and I want to bring to you today. What if you already own, because of your compliance mandates and regulatory requirements, the best intrusion detection tool on the planet? That's a little bit of hyperbole, but not too much. I'm going to go through the next slides in pretty rapid sequence so we can get to the meat of this, which is really what Alex shows us in the product itself. But the job that Tripwire Enterprise is most frequently hired to do, and we do a lot of things in the context of security configuration management, is file integrity monitoring. And I can't say file integrity monitoring without somebody saying, oh, you mean like in PCI, Payment Card Industries Data Security Standard 11.5? where they do a pretty good job of specifically calling out what file integrity monitoring tools should be doing and also showing the kind of things that they should be monitoring integrity of, system executables and application executables, configuration files or CIs, um, archived log files and such. And it's not just PCI that calls out file integrity monitoring, also HIPAA. So HIPAA has specific requirements for technical safeguards. And although in PCI we're talking specifically about um, cardholder information and data in the segmented or the cordoned off PCI in scope section, HIPAA, we have a little bit different set of requirements. They're really looking at patient confidential information or personally identifiable information relating to, to patients. And they go into really the same details for their requirements in terms of what you should be looking at. You should be protecting uh, the patient health information from improper alteration or destruction. And they also list the mechanisms by which you should be doing it. And again, they use the word alteration and destruction. It's also in NERC requirements. So if you come out of the, if you're joining this webcast out of the energy industry, you know all about NERC SIPs, critical infrastructure protection. I love the way that the NERC SIPs stated because they're not just looking at alteration and destruction, but they also specifically say once you're looking at change control, you should also be looking at additions, not just modifications and deletes, replacements and additions specifically to those critical files. Once we start putting in the words addition and we start changing the scope of it beyond just the change control process to looking at what is there that was not there before, we really start crossing a really interesting line. And so you might be asking yourself, okay, great, great. I know all about uh, the requirements that govern my uh, IT infrastructure and my industry. So most compliance standards include something about file and targeting monitoring. What does that really mean at base level IT security? And for that, I like to refer back to SANS, who in my book is sort of the definitive authority on the types of controls we use. You're probably all familiar with the SANS top 20 controls. Um, and in their website, they have a very nice set of FAQs, and this is actually a screen grab from that FAQ. Intrusion detection FAQ, what is the role of file integrity checkers uh, like Tripwire in intrusion detection? This is where the gap closes in my mind. If file integrity monitor outlines the specific things that you need to check for alteration and potentially destruction, 
when you get into intrusion detection, you start talking about using that as the baseline, and they use very specific language in SAND. It's very difficult to compromise a system without altering a system file, and that also, in my mind, includes uh, additions as well as alterations and deletions, and they do a very good job of outlining exactly where intrusion detection is core to securing your, secu uh, your computing environment. And they also do a good job of saying one of the foundational components of good intrusion detection is file integrity checkers. And you can, uh, I didn't want to bring these into this presentation because um, we have other things that we want to talk about in a demonstration that we want to do, but I'd ask you to go look up the SANS Top 20 controls. Pay particular attention to uh, Control 3, Secure Configurations for Hardware and Software on Laptops, Workstations, and Servers. Their baseline management milestones, they have these NSA milestones they also associate with it, really speak to the core of using file integrity monitoring to start doing intrusion detection. They've also got Critical Control 6. Uh, Tripwire Enterprise plays a good role in that, and that's actually for application software security that also deals with baseline and configurations around your key applications. That might be uh, Adobe Acrobat. That might be Microsoft Office. I like to use uh, Microsoft Information uh, in Internet Information Server, IIS, or Exchange as examples in that place. Another of the SANS Top 20 where we play uh, very, very solidly, you could satisfy really the entire control with Tripwire Enterprise by itself, is, is number 10, secure configurations for network devices, firewalls, routers, and switches. We'll talk a little bit about a demo that uh, Alex is going to bring to us later. So without going into all those details, I'd refer you to that, go to SANS, and I want to do a quick comparison of how we look at file integrity monitoring versus intrusion detection. And I use in intrusion detection really the SANS definitions of intrusion detection. And as we can see, they both require baselines. Uh, they both really require us to understand changes in excruciating detail. It can't be uh, event or log level information like, oh, hey, this file was changed. We need to know what changed in it. We need to, it's especially important to know uh, did the content change, or was it the permissions that changed, or were there attributes, like whether it's hidden or security attributes, that changed about this file? And I start comparing this to things on the right-hand side. Host intrusion detection also uses a baseline to define anomalies that might occur. Uh, and this comment, little things matter even more in host intrusion detection than they do in file integrity monitoring, at least in my mind. And going from the known and trusted state to also including unknown and untrusted in host intrusion detection, on the left-hand side, PCI is an example of focused on a certain kind of in-scope, and HIPAA has a scope definition as well, as well as NERC and most regulatory um, standards. Uh, and really, in host intrusion, they don't use that sort of scoping. They talk about really focusing on the critical infrastructure, the mission-critical infrastructure that's most necessary for your IT estate. File integrity monitoring is heavily focused on changes. Host intrusion detection also talks about adds and deletes. Uh, and then, of course, there's other differences. If we go to the bottom of this list, file integrity monitoring focuses uh, strongly on registry keys and subkeys, but in host intrusion detection, we're also looking at uh, sort of hidden registry uh, keys, things that are a little bit less uh, easy to find and assess. So my summation of the whole thing, host intrusion detection is greater than file integrity monitoring in terms of the scope of the things that are covered in it. Um, that's not greater in terms of capability. It's like really opening up the scope of what it is that you want to monitor. So the example is once you've, you've passed your PCI audits, you're doing pretty good. Maybe you've done a lot of automation around your PCI audits. That's a topic of another webcast we've got coming up. Um, but you really want to expand that investment now. I want to, I want to get more real-time detective capability out of it. It really comes to expanding scope. This is about the part where I stop talking, and I want to ask Alex to step in and do a really quick demo for Tripwire Enterprise that's kind of focused around looking at Tripwire Enterprise from an intrusion-focused lens. In our first example today, we're going to take a look at how we can detect breaches on your systems. Now, you know, as we know, Tripwire Enterprise is capable of watching your environment, telling you about all these you know, hundreds, perhaps thousands, or even millions of changes that are taking place on a day-to-day -day basis. But Tripwire Enterprise can also filter those changes and report on those that are particularly interesting to us. For instance, if we filter our uh, rules down to the cybercrime breach detection rule set and report on those, we can get a report like this that shows how many assets have seen indications of breach. And if we click into this here, we can see, you know, in this case, there's only been one in my environment. And I may wonder, what are those indicators? You know, what does that system look like and, and why am I seeing this? So I would click into that, jump into that data and see why. 
In this case here, this system has seen uh, four suspicious changes. To start, there's been a new executable added to the system, and this is an unauthorized change. It's not one that was part of our change plans. It's been added at this time, 8.46 a.m. Now, we can drill into that, and we can, of course, see everything about that change, including who made the change. Uh, now, beyond that, though, we may wonder what the next thing is, you know, and, and why there was another change. So, right up after that, and we see at about an hour later, there's been a change to the firewall configuration on that system. And at this point, we may be pretty suspicious, may want more information. We can click Elements View to go into a more of a forensic lens here, and uh, we can see the difference, the side-by-side -side difference on the firewall. We can see the before on the left and after on the right. And what we have is an added rule that allows that executable to listen on TCP port 1337. So we can immediately tell from this report that uh, you know, there, these two changes are related. This executable is listening through the firewall due to this rule. And of course, you, know, you might even expect this at this point, uh, the next change that happened was the fact that that server started listening on more ports. And we can see what ports those are. Right here, we can see that now that server is listening on port 1337. These types of filtered views into our information are very helpful in host-based intrusion detection. They're very good at telling you the story of, of what happened, when, where, and by whom, on top of the fact that you know, there was a story in the first place. We took a look at how our cyber crime controls could be used to, you know, watch a breach happening and report that, you know, the incidents that took place in that breach to our customers. We we built the cyber crime controls to help our customers do things quickly, you know, detect breaches or incidents like these, and also to prevent them from happening in the first place. That's a great demo, Alex. Thanks very much. So, um, to kind of cut to the the net of it, what do, what do I need to do? If I own Tripwire Enterprise and I'm monitoring on critical servers to add those kinds of rules to it, and it's kind of a loaded question because I've got some slides I'm going to show that will show people how to do it, but really, is it just rules? Is it just content? Um, yeah, that's, that's basically what it is. And, and with the cybercrime controls, you know, in terms of the detection side, we're, we're looking at the same sorts of things, files, registry keys, and the output of commands. And we're simply filtering that down to activity that we see in modern breaches today getting you, you know, pointed at the right sort of information that's taking place. And, uh, and that really looks at sort of leading indicators of what a breach might be, and that's our, our sort of intellectual property in terms of assessing where threats are in the marketplace and really the threats that are making the most, uh, I guess, making the most hay and violating people's environments. Is that the kind of thing we're looking at? Yeah, absolutely. So things like, you know, ports getting open that aren't part of our baselines for our servers and, you know, other sorts of malicious activity like we looked at before. So all of you that are on this call, if you want to look at uh, that kind of content, that rule content that's imported in Tripwire Enterprise, I'm going to flash through a couple of slides here real quick. If you don't know where the Tripwire Customer Center is, by all means, go there. Uh, most of you as Tripwire Enterprise users or even prospects or people that have had experience with the product in the past know the Tripwire Customer Center. But go to the Customer Center, go to the product downloads, when you're in the product downloads, just click into what we call the solutions area that's under Tripwire Enterprise. Uh, Cybercrime Controls is one of our new solutions that we launched last year that's almost exclusively content-based, as Alex was saying. And you'll go to a place where you can download for SUSE Linux, as well as Red Hat Linux, as well as Windows, prepackaged Cybercrime Controls. And if I'm right, Alex, you're a better authority on this than I am. The Cybercrime Controls actually combine both uh, a set of hand-selected CIS policies as well as these detection rules all in one package. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. It puts it all together and, and gives you really the, the best of, of all the different security policies out there, whether they're PCI or HIPAA or SOX. We, we looked at what matters the most to protect first. Great. So let's say you're in your infrastructure. You've got, uh, we'll use PCI as an example. Uh, again, you know, you're on your critical infrastructure that's defined as in scope for PCI. But there might be some things that are really adjacent and close by that are key indicators of what activity looks like. I'm going to cue Alex to launch us into the next uh, demo where we'll look at some at monitoring AD and LDAP systems.
And you know, with this demo, we'll look at another example of how changes can you know be detected, and especially look at changes that you know are are really impactful to our uh, you know our organization and our infrastructure. For our next example, we're going to take a look at a couple changes in Active Directory. So here we have a report that looks at those changes that we've seen in that area. In our report, we can see much like before, we can see you know, what's changing, domain admins for instance, uh, who's making that change, this user over here, when that change occurred and where it occurred. Uh, and then we can go into those changes just like before and show you the details. So, if we're curious what's different about domain admins, we can see that very quickly. We can go in and see the you know, previous value, or baseline on the left, and the observed value on the right. In this case, we can tell from the green highlighting and the green plus here that the user Eric Stalker has been added to domain admins. This example, I think, really shows the value of having strong baselines because, you know, if you don't know who's supposed to have the keys to your castle, you know, how do you know when the wrong person does? Uh, changes like this don't affect one or two servers. They open up an entire domain. So it's really monitoring that, uh, that critical server that serves as, like, the safeguard, the key safeguard point to the rest of that network segment or the, a lot of the adjacent servers and the things that share information with it, right? Absolutely. So uh, people may be interested in how you implement this. And the nicest thing, really, I think about two kinds of capabilities. We're going to talk about, uh, Alex just showed us Active Directory monitoring. There's also a, a database monitoring capability that works the same way. If you've already got Tripwire Enterprise, the basic file integrity monitoring capabilities on a server that also happens to be an LDAP server or serve as that dual purpose role, there's a very simple add-on that you can buy from Tripwire that is an add-on to Tripwire Enterprise that opens up, provides rules and content to download, and allows you to start monitoring some of the things that Alex is showing us in that demo. So, and what does it work with? We work with Active Directory, Novell eDirectory, and really the answer is almost anything. So any LDAP, V2 or V3 system, Samba, Sun Java system directory, any of those, we have the ability to now do this in-depth analysis, and as Alex pointed out, if you can control that ingress point where the sort of the distribution of rights and privileges go, you have a lot more power within your within your environment, whether it's your in-scope environment for some compliance mandate or whether it's just from the broader perspective of, of security. And um, I think, Alex, uh, if we speak about, you know, dealing with the security principle of least privilege is LDAP and Active Direct Monitoring one of the best ways to get your hands around that? Yeah, especially when you want to make big sweeping changes to get started. That's usually where you start is your, your massive, you know, effective configurations. Great. So we've got that piece. We've got Active Directory and LDAP monitoring in general that you can expand to very easily, actually, without too much either, uh, you know, infrastructure investment in terms of the software licensing or really uh, without having to deploy to a whole bunch of other machines, you might have a handful of critical machines that can give you a lot of power and control over that infrastructure. We want to look at another piece that Tripwire Enterprise also does that uh, largely in, um, in uh, PCI or other HIPAA type environments is um, underutilized to some degree, and that's monitoring network devices with Tripwire Enterprise. Alex, you want to lead us into this piece? Uh, yeah, sure. And we're going to look at another great example of how we can detect uh, these you know, high impact changes. Uh, our firewalls are the very first layer of defense for hundreds or sometimes even thousands of devices. You know, and if their configurations are drifting without our knowledge, we accept a high level of risk. So let's take a look at this demonstration. So let's take a look at a couple examples of how we watch network devices in Tripwire Enterprise. I'll go ahead and run that report and see what that looks like. You know, here, simply put, we have a couple of changes on a couple of different devices. Uh, for starters, our startup config has changed on this device. We can dive into that. Uh, we can see the detail, see what's different. Uh, in this case, the user gmillard made this, this uh, change, and uh, what he changed was uh, line 13 of the startup config, where we see an addition here of the username ksoze, with privilege level 15. On Cisco IOS devices, that's you know full administrator level access, enable privileges. Um, so obviously that's a big change to that device in terms of who can administer it and who has the keys to control it. For another example, we'll look at this PIC7 device where the running config is different. 
Let's go ahead and take a look at that and see the detail there. Here, the change was made by user A. Cox. And I have no idea who that is. But uh, at line 64 and line 65, there have been changes to logging. These uh, hosts have been removed uh, from the audit configuration of this device. So suddenly, logs are no longer going to our logging servers. On top of that, this user has turned on Telnet to all IPs, from all IPs, going in and out of this device. Uh, as many of us in the security field know, that's a very insecure change. And turning off logging is, is often not a good thing. <laughs> and this is how we gain visibility into network devices as well, seeing the changes that take place. To you guys. I think we, we were able to take a look at us watching the watcher. And you know, I think that's an important part of your security strategy, or should be at least, is, is having an element of defense in depth, in depth, layering your security strategy out so that you can look at your security tools and even protect them. That's a really good point, Alex. And I hear a lot of that from customers and analysts and people that know Tripwire from way back in our legacy past to even our most recent capabilities. They use the phrase watching the watcher, and that's really the trusted role that Tripwire Enterprise and Tripwire products serve in that environment is how do you make sure that those things have not been tampered with, that haven't been modified to any degree. And so I, I hear that quite a bit. The way that uh, network devices actually work in Tripwire Enterprise is really the least expensive node type that you can add to a Tripwire Enterprise implementation. We say network devices, but um, Alex, we also mean security devices in general, right? So firewalls. Um, what are the other kind of, kind of things that we're monitoring with the same technology? For, uh, typical examples would be you know, firewalls, routers, you know, switches, uh, wireless access points, you know, anything that we can connect to and monitor its configuration. We can get you baselines on that and determine how those are drifting. Um, I love this when you, when you do a presentation and you don't actually see a typo until you're presenting it live. So just for, just for a proof and point, just to make sure we all understand, we don't monitor witches in firewalls, as this slide says. We do no monitoring of witches whatsoever. We do, however, monitor switches. So just, just, a case in, just, just to check that. Um, we do work, we provide out-of-the-box rules and content for a huge number of major brands that are actually available from Tripwire our Customer Center, the same site I showed you earlier. But Alex, we've also got a fully extensible UDK, or Universal Device Kit. So you can really make monitoring rules for any or a custom device, isn't that right? Yeah, that's correct. I mean, any device that we can connect to, you know, with the protocol such as SSH or, you know, SCP or, or even, you know, Telnet if you prefer, uh, you know, we can monitor those devices for change with those connections. And uh, we, you know, a lot of our reputation and heritage is in, in a very robust, scalable, low-pain, low-hassle, agent-based architecture, which we still use predominantly in our file systems and servers because it's the best, fastest, most accurate way to get information off of a, off of a box or a device. But network devices is largely done agentlessly. Is that right, Alex? That's correct. Through the protocols I discussed before and some others, we can connect to your devices without needing to install any sort of, you know, agent. For instance, on the firewall. Right. We're going to jump to another piece here. We're going to talk about the last sort of the other areas that you can add on to your monitoring infrastructure. And we're going to talk about monitoring database servers. We're not going to run a demo of it. Uh, we do want to respect your time and keep this uh, relatively short, but information that's actionable and useful for you guys that you're listening. But I want to talk about our database monitoring capability because it's really one of the strong suites of Tripwire Enterprise. And we have for years actually provided monitoring uh, of Oracle systems and Microsoft systems and IBM DB2 systems just recently added um, monitoring for Sybase databases as well. And, and Alex, we monitor um, different things in databases. Um, and the, the list is here, but can you talk a little bit about what we are monitoring versus, say, monitoring records specifically in a database? Sure, yeah. I mean, there's an important distinction between database access monitoring and database configuration monitoring. And we focus on the configuration. You know, with a database access monitoring solution, your main goal is to look at those records and make sure only the right people are accessing the right records. Uh, it's different with Tripwire Enterprise, where we're focused on configuration control. We look at how your databases are built and secured and make sure that's not, you know, changing without your knowledge. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take a few minutes to answer a couple of questions. Alex is on a different line, so Alex, I might answer, ask a question, and then kind of uh, throw it back to you to answer, and then I might answer them myself, and we'll kind of go into our summation. I want to point you listeners uh, and watchers to some specific assets that we have available for you. Um, 
And here's a question. So, uh, actually, we kind of covered this. What appliances or devices does your kit cover? Alex, is the answer really everything? Really, pretty much everything we can connect to. So, you know, anything, you know, we can, can talk to with SSH, Telnet, SCP, you know, a number of other different, uh, you know, transfer protocols. There's a question in here, too, that can network devices be monitored from the same console? So I think the question really is, you've got one console, most environments, we have some customers with 30,000 nodes that use uh, 10 or a dozen console, but most of our customers have one TE console, which generates all of their policy information, all of their change information, uh, their node management and asset management. Uh, so I think the question is, if I'm monitoring network devices as well as my file servers, is that all one console? Yeah, you can view that all together. Mm -hmm. That's all through one console. Great. This is a question that came into, uh, it's also so TE database monitoring compared to specific appliance vendor DB monitoring system like Imperva. And I think that uh, Alex kind of addressed that. So systems like Imperva Guardium really monitoring not only database structure, which we do, but also largely monitoring database content. Uh, Alex, do you have much infra or experience with uh, working with systems like Imperva in the field or examples where customers use us to monitor structure as well as a system like Imperva to monitor content? Sure, yeah. I mean, Imperva is a great system where you're, you're watching for, you know, say, specific events that come through that are suspicious. It's kind of like, you know, a detection of events that shouldn't be happening. Uh, you know, so you can have that in place and it can work you know, side by side with a, a solution like Tripwire Enterprise where we're looking at your configuration, we're snapshotting the schema, and we can tell you how the tables are changing, the stored procedures, and your user access control is changing. So I, I can see you know, both of them put together. Uh, here's a question I'll throw at you too, and the short answer is, is yes, we do this, but maybe you can elaborate a little bit. It's can you touch on monitoring VMware ESXi, which is frankly a question that we get a lot more and more and more about how we can monitor uh, host and also vMotion instances. Do you want to touch on that a little bit, Alex? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, you know, we definitely have the ability to connect to, you know, your VMware environments. And, uh, you know, we, as an example there with your, your ESXi or ESX servers, we can simply talk to one of your, you know, vCenter nodes that has all that information for the configurations of your virtual infrastructure and, you know, watch for changes in those areas. Uh, we could actually even give security guidance for how to make those, you know, pieces of virtual infrastructure more secure. They come straight from VMware. Great. I'm going to take one more question here, um, and then we'll save the other ones for email response, or maybe we'll get back to you in some other way. I want to keep sort of aligned with our time. Um, we need a good way to monitor group policy changes. Does Tripwire have any solution for this? So let's distinguish between group policy and what we're doing in Active Directory normally. Do you want to speak to that a little bit, Alex? Yeah, sure. So, you know, with our connection to directory services and Active Directory in particular, we can go in and monitor your group policy and your, your objects in there. So, you know, making sure that, you know, your, your security settings are uh, not drifting without your knowledge and even offering some guidance for you know, perhaps how to improve those, make them more secure. Great. When we have guidance, do we have uh, Microsoft guidance on that or we also have third-party guidance like CIS? I, I, I believe we've got both, but you're more of the expert. Which guidance do you, do you prefer you see most often deployed in the field, Alex? You know, you know, a lot of it really varies based on what the customer needs and, and perhaps what their, you know, organization's, you know, standards requirements are first off. Uh, but, you know, a great fallback for any of them is the Center for Internet Security benchmarks, which are really detailed and offer prescriptive guidance, not only telling you, okay, think about this, but actually here's how to fix it. Right. Yeah, that's a really good point, is uh, when you start overlapping our integrity monitoring solutions along with, you know, side by side with our configuration assessment in Tripwire Enterprise, you get a much, much more robust solution because then you have guidance on what is appropriate, right? What, what is best practices for these types of configurations? And if you go to the extent of fully utilizing the whole Tripwire Enterprise suite, you get remediation capabilities as well, where we could actually, using uh, approval and workflow and sign-offs, obviously, go out and remediate changes which in my mind dramatically reduces the gap, your exposure gap. So we, we see a change in configuration settings that makes it insecure or, for instance, heaven forbid, opens Telnet for no apparent reason, we can automatically go out and shut that down. Uh, and we can do it at least through it with notification and approval and workflow, which is key. There's a lot of things that, um, a lot of changes that you don't want an automated response to. Right, Alex? And I, there are changes, I think, 
that do require an automated response. I think one of those is when it's evident that somebody is tampering logging on one of your security tools. Do you want to talk about that? We, that's a scenario we, we run into quite a bit. Sure, yeah. I mean, auditing is important for security and compliance. You want to make sure that you have the, you know, the, the trail there, the digital fingerprints to show you know, what's happening and who's done it. And if somebody turns off logging, that can be really damaging. So, you know, we can set up push button remediation to turn back on logging, for instance, or you know, in, in, in more advanced circumstances, you know, basically have that logging automatically, you know, fixed and, and turned back on when we see it come off. In, in very secure or stringent environments, I mean, that's that's a really good idea. Not just from the threat perspective, where, you know, anti forensics and you know the. the the notion that hackers, one of the first things they're going to do is come in and try to disable your ability to see that they've been there, so turning off things like logging. But it also happens in regular operational uh, environments too. So I come out and I'm going to deploy a new application, a uh, new set of services. I don't really want to get a whole bunch of, generate a bunch of noise in my log, so I'll turn it off. But sometimes I forget to turn it back on. I get back out of the environment. I've deployed my stuff, but you've got logging off and you can't tell right away. So that's a scenario we run into. Um, into as well. So to, to wrap this up, thanks, Alex, very much for the demos. I think those are right on point with the point we're trying to get across, you know, to um, how to leverage your existing investment and get more out of it, get more detection capability, more real-time visibility out of it. We go back to the question, you know, can you transform your compliance monitoring solution that you've already paid for into that first-rate detective solution? Can you find that hidden Da Vinci, if I don't stretch my metaphor too darn far, but can you find that hidden Da Vinci in, you know, what you sometimes see is this thing I got to do. I got I to gotta do file integrity monitoring for my InScope infrastructure. Can you get more out of it? I think the, the answer is yes. We believe there's a way to turn file integrity monitoring into full-on host-based intrusion detection that gives you a lot more capability. And I think importantly, uh, with guidance from our professional services people as well as our people in the field like Alex, and the prepackaged content, we can do that without causing you to drown in a sea of change information or false positives. We've got very good rule content that lets you focus on kind of what matters the most. Um, is in terms of getting information around that, we've got two resources that I would like to point you to. One is a white paper we released, uh, I think last fall, a Security In-Depth Using Integrated Controls. You might read that title and you go, well, that's interesting. It may not be, it's Security In-Depth. We know about that. And integrated controls, yeah, that's important. That may not be particularly germane, but in reality, if you look at the subtitle, you may already have most of what you need to protect against today's security threats. This is a great white paper on how to take what you've already got, what you've paid money for, and leverage it and make it more responsive, see more, get greater visibility, and really move it from a really reactive solution to more of a proactive solution around your security needs. So. There's a white paper that's available to all of you. Uh, I think we're going to show a link to it, or we'll have one available later. There's also a data sheet. If you, so Alex showed you the cybercrime controls and the, that rule set. If you just want to go get those, I just want to go to the Tripwire Customer Center, but you want some more background, I believe this data sheet does an outline of the uh, CIS benchmark policies that are an uh, example of the ones that are included in that set of rules as well as a little bit more description around the, um, the host, the breach and tech detection rules that we include in it too. So uh, with that, I'm going to take one more quick look and see if there's any additional questions that come in that we can grab real quick. Um, I love this. Thank you, Chauncey. When you talk about turning logging back on automatically, what is the time between? Um, I just have to say I've seen a demo of this from professional services and from Alex. Zero. In fact, it happens so fast that it's really difficult to detect it because it's using execution controls and rules built into Tripwire Enterprise to automatically turn it on as soon as it detects or gets notification that logging has been disabled. It's literally, um, you go from, let me use an example. Um, given uh, a small number of events, basically, and you're doing monitoring with Tripwire Enterprise once daily, in that 24 hours, you may lose uh, you know, something around the order of 9 million events, basically because you're really scanning once that you won't know until the hour passes basically that you've had a significant change including turning off the, the logging settings or auditing settings. With this uh, solution in there, you cut basically 99.3% um, of the time, the wasted time in that 24 hour cycle to get it down to really measurable in minutes of how long it takes to detect that the device has been disabled and then uh, re-enable your monitoring solution. So it's uh, how fast? Uh, pretty pretty darn fast, actually. 
Um, that's all of the time that we've got questions for. We will grab any of the questions that we didn't answer and get back to them by email, um, or we'll give you a call even if you want to, whatever you'd like, whatever you'd prefer. I want to thank everybody very much. Uh, Crystal, um, thank you, Alex, very much. Alex, I uh, look forward to doing another webcast with you soon. Uh, someday we might actually be in the same building once again. Who knows? We'll see. Maybe if I go out and visit you guys in the Midwest, we'll see what happens. Um, Sounds good. <laughs> good. Thank you. Um, at that, I'm going to hand it back over to Crystal. Thanks very much for joining us today on this discussion about moving from compliance to security and making PCI earn its keep. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Alex. And, and thank you to everybody on the line uh, for a great, engaging discussion. Your questions um, definitely well received, like Michael said. We'll, we'll make sure to get back to you um, if you did uh, send us something and we didn't have time to get to it. Um, one last thing, so Michael referenced two different pieces of content that are available um, and in order for you to get those links and be able to click on them in your player, uh, your webcast player, there's a white papers button that you can click on that reference both, both pieces of content, so immediate access to those. Um, we welcome your feedback as well. Please um, feel, take some time to, to let us know about those presentations and you're welcome to submit additional questions. Thanks very much again for your time. Um, that's the end of our webcast today.